Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, so this session is about workflow for new packages, meaning um, how do we expedite the process of getting new packages, that is uh, software that's never been packaged before for the distribution, into um, not just Ubuntu, but also upstream to Debian, which then flows down into Ubuntu. So this kind of... Uh, came out of some discussions we've been having on Ubuntu Devel the past few months. And, and some of the, the topics that have come up are um, the fact that uh, review, uh, which is sort of where we currently encourage people to go to, uh, isn't getting as much attention. So sometimes people put their packages in and then uh, don't get, don't get uh, mentoring or response or sponsorship to uh, get their packages in. Um, and then also following up on some changes we made last cycle to try to make our documentation a whole lot clearer about the idea that we really, really encourage people to go upstream to Debian first before they <coughs> submit something directly to Ubuntu. So it's a little bit of an open discussion session, but at the end we'll be looking for a few work items uh, that we could do this cycle to help improve things a little bit more. <coughs> okay, so... Um, okay. Go on. No, you, no, you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to check with the room. So does nobody, does anyone in here disagree with the premise that we should be, that the default case should be get apps upstream to Debian and then let them flow down naturally? Does anybody have a... Are you going to respond to this point, or are you going to...? Yeah, that's right, I'm not going to wait That's what I just okay. want to know if anyone disagrees with that. This is the premise that we're working from. So I don't, I don't, I don't, right so don't essentially disagree with it. So, so I don't... So yeah, it would be ideal, but like I, I want to put some qualifiers in that, which okay. is just... There are times when that means that someone who's submitting things won't be able to get their package into Ubuntu for months, even if they get accepted into Debian that day. They submit upstream. If they submit to Debian, like after we stop coming from Debian after feature freeze, you could then. But we have plans. We have. We haven't had that. What? We're no, no, no. We're not talking about stable releases. We're yeah. talking about the normal thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. I don't yeah. think there's ever. There's never a time when you could upload directly that you couldn't sync from Debian. Right. I don't think that's so ever. Okay. Okay. So it's feature freeze exceptions for new packages are quite possible. We had. We've had new packages land quite close to release. If it's a new universe and it's a leaf package, it's probably okay. Mm. Yeah, you know, there won't be a time when uploading to Debian, if a package was accepted in Debian, it would be less, it would be more difficult to get it in Ubuntu. If it's in Debian, we can usually sync it. If you could upload it to Ubuntu directly. Does that make sense? Um, and if you, in, in the cases when you couldn't, up, when you couldn't do that, there's extra. So there's uh, um, the app view board, you can submit it. After freeze, if we're too deep into freeze, you can do it via that method. But and keep, keep in mind that the ARB package is not the same package, so it has to, <laughs> it has to install in different directories, it has yes. to install an opt. So, I mean, actually this is useful. So what I've been telling people, and it's only been like two or three developers so far, is in, um, from the ARB process, is uh, get your package up into Debian. Um, if you get it then synced into the de development release, then we can also get it back into the current release through backports. Mm -hmm. Is that? That's not good. So that's kind of the story I've been. I've been and, and even in the yeah, and even in the strange case where for whatever reason we wouldn't want to approve that FFE to put it into the release pocket, we are exploring options to make backports available early so that you can start using it, um, even starting the feature freeze for for new packages as a way to um, to keep the, the, yeah, to sort of keep those things moving. It's currently pending tech board review. Is there a way we could stop ignoring review? I, I don't <laughs> think that's actually productive um, because uh, the, the, the frequent result, I think, from, ignore, from, from uploading packages from review directly into Ubuntu is that they get orphaned rather quickly um, and because because of the way the universe is structured, there is no accountability because everybody's responsible for everything. So we don't have that concept of maintainership like Debian does, um, which I, 
which I, I think is really valuable to have at some point in the upstream process. So, um, it's been a long time since I was in, in the Debian world. Um, when you guys had an app that I wrote and I submitted to Debian, would I be the maintainer of that app, or would someone else have to sponsor it? Well, y yes and yes. <laughs> so, I, I, so, so kind of the question behind my question is, what it is about Debian that makes it actually less likely to get off, and given that I'm actually going to care precisely less about maintaining the Debian than I ever Okay, so when you upload to Debian, yep. uh, you create, you do something, you, you create the same sort of package you create as if you were uploading directly. Yep. Um, you upload something called mentors at Debian.net, which is a website that lets you, you know, track sponsorship packages. Yep. Then somebody else who's a Debian developer, mm -hmm. um, Finds a package, tests it out, makes sure it works, if, you know, and then uploads it to Debian. Yep. Then gets synced to Ubuntu, and they've been able to be happy because they can actually. The, the reason that it doesn't uh, become orphaned, I think, is that I think that there's um, a little bit stronger long-term responsibility associated with sponsorship. So the, the DD who sponsored it now feels like something got <coughs> some. No, they feel like they're going to bother you and yeah. don't work. <laughs> because it's, it's not it's not their problem that, that your package is crap if it, if it, is, if it turns out to be crap. They're basically going to say, you're the person who maintained it, who initially created it. They don't have interest, they don't have any interest in the package beyond helping you get it into the Debian. Right. Which is what they're doing as a sponsor. We're, and and Motu is less effective at bothering people than Debian developers. Yes, because they because in Mo in Motu it's more difficult to track who should be <coughs> on the package. But you just packages don't have maintainers in Ubuntu. Yeah, so I know that, but, it's, but, it doesn't, but I'm not the maintainer for the package in Debian either, right? You are. Yes, you are. Oh, right, so I would be the maintainer of the package in Debian, so... But my name would somehow disappear if I... Your name would be on it, and you could buy email If I put it directly to Ubuntu, my name wouldn't be on it? It would be on it. It might be in the original maintainer. Yeah, okay, right. So it's, it's just a tooling thing for not being able to find me, but it doesn't sound like no. a structural it's, thing. It's the name is there, it's a social thing. Right. And that just because your name is on a package in, in Ubuntu does not mean that you are responsible for that package. Well, right. there, is mean, a, there is a social convention that if you were the last person that uploaded it, somebody else will check with you before they do. Right. But it's not such a strong sense of, no, you were the one who submitted this package. It is your responsibility from, from now on to make sure that it's good today. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> my I know that in Debian I rejected a package once or twice just because maintainer wasn't really interested in maintaining it in a long term. It's not worth the review effort for person who's not going to get maintained. So uh, I'd like to make a point on that. So it seems to me the discussion is framing the way that you should go to Debian first only because it's the right thing to do. So I personally do think it's the right thing to do, but I don't think that's the, the only reason. I think that in pushing the package, uh, we're talking about universe. Right? I think that in the case of universe, pushing package to the universe first is actually where you see a real symbiosis in the sense that I have the impression that the amount of people doing reviews on the video side, on the video side, are higher than the number of people doing reviews on the Google side. And still talking about universe, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I'm also under the impression that there is a bit more experience still on the video side than within universe. So I think you have something to gain also in terms of package quality, in terms of time that the review will take. So I'm not sure about your assumption that it will necessarily be the case that if you go to Ubuntu first, it will be faster. Right. Okay. I so it might be faster if the standards are lower, and that's something. <laughs> I mean, I mean in the for instance, if you don't need a review at all, that's of course it's faster because you don't need to wait for a review in that sense. Sure. But I'm not sure that the same level of standards will be actually faster. Sure, I, I can see that. I mean, just obviously hearing the pricey of the, the, the process, it's suddenly like three or four or five different steps if you put back okay. on, and so you would naturally yes. think. Well, the difference in steps so really... So you count the number of steps for EV, but yeah. the overweight in time is not, okay. not necessarily not. That, that's, that's far more persuasive. The, the only additional step you're really imposing on the developer is, because I'm trying to get back from Ubuntu, is once it gets up to the Debian, if we're after um, the freeze, then file a sync request. So if we're after Debian import freeze, then file a sync request. Or a FFE. Or a and an FFE, potentially. Yes. I mean, we're, we're talking about one, potentially two extra steps, plus potentially, you know, uh, three if the person if we're early enough in the, or, you know, or two if we're, if we're early enough in the development cycle that the user's mm -hmm. running the develop release. Like, there, there are a lot of sort of complicating factors. I don't think you can say that there's only one extra step. I think there are one several question. extra steps. Regardless of how it plays out. Is that new backport thing? 
comes in, and that might be another thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So. right. I think, I think it'll be helpful if we can improve the documentation a little bit, in the sense that I think right now people kind of stumble onto Ubuntu and they, they I mean, we had a session on this earlier this week actually, that they stumble onto Ubuntu and they're just kind of like, I want to put something in and they don't really know. So, you know, I do manual mentoring and I'm, I know other people do too, but I think like, uh, if it was one simple process, it's like, okay, if you want this, you go this way, and this, you go this way, and this, you go this way. Um, and so we can, we can borrow, borrow some of the documentation and deliver that process. So. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was one thing that did come up in the session I think yesterday was that if somebody approaches you speaking Spanish and you reply in English, you immediately set up a barrier. And if somebody has approached you speaking about Ubuntu and you immediately start talking about Debian, you've actually also created a barrier. Why so it would be much better to get them in while they're, they're buzzing and they're, what do you say? Excitement is going. And then you can start to move on. You can immediately turn around and start talking about something completely different. You know, you're using their terminology until you're both comfortable and you're having a relationship going. And then it's possible to introduce, you know, I, I'm sorry for the delay on this side. We, we, you know, we, we certainly have a problem with packages that go into universe being unmaintained. And Ubuntu isn't a particularly good place for maintenance of packages. It's not as good as Debian. Debian has much better QA tools, better QA efforts. Um, also, a lot more developers. Yeah, yeah they have yeah. about um, 1,200 developers. And we have no, 192 we when have, I checked we last have week. We less than 200. Um, for our relative user bases, it's, it's, uh, Ubuntu does not have the resources to be the to, have primary maintenance of packages. We depend on Debian. You know. So it's a virtuous cycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you make sure that you have a delay problem? Uh, I'd say that Debian well, mentors in a lot better shape than review. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of efforts recently to make sure that things mentors don't get ignored. <laughs> things still fall through the cracks, um, but. They're, they they seem to be very much working on it, and when, it, when they fail, you know, it, it, of course happens. I just want to say that Mentors is a lot better than it was, and a lot better than its reputation. Zach, Zach you were asking yeah. some folks questions Sorry, in the past that. week on like the derivatives list and stuff about how Mentors.debian.net has been going. Do you have a feeling on that? Like, has it <coughs> has the change to You're pick up the pace? Are you working with Mentors? Not particularly. Okay. So, I, so my my last feedback is from back this year back in that post. And I know they've been working a lot in improving the culture of human English, and I think they're happy about the result of that. So they are also sometimes have some kind of promise of replying to any single request of review within a given number of days, like four or five. Not necessarily doing the review, because it depends on the amount of mental people there, but giving some feedback to the guy, like, okay, we are on it, we will do a review. In. So I think they've been working on that. And I think they are quite happy with that, and they are also setting up some sort of virtual cycle like uh, give and get. So uh, you give a review and exchange you get a review for the software. So trying to form the, the mentors of, of So it's like building up the mentors exactly. over time mm -hmm. out of the pool of people who have been mentors before. So I think it's going pretty well. So what I, this, what I mentioned on the derivative list is that we should make efforts to keep the balance. So if we are, if assuming they are on balance right now, it would respect to the number of reviews needed and the number of reviews given. We should be sure that having all the Ubuntu work on there does not break it out. So in the beginning it will, it's unavoidable, but I think we should think about how to make it sure that in the long term it's sustainable. And mm -hmm. we don't have any concrete proposal about that yet, but it's a different topic. How to recruit mentors from within yes. the, Ubuntu, the Ubuntu culture. We have a I wanted to add something about the feedback on Mentors Debian channel because in my, from my experience, when I tried to get some packages into Debian, they were mostly KDE packages. From Mentors channel, they told me to go to the Deb, uh, to Q to team, uh, Debian Q team, and they told me go to back to go back to Mentors several times until ten with you. Gladly decided to review my package, and I got some feedback finally. So that's <laughs> ma making people go forth and between the teams is not really motivating to get something into Debian. Of course, and I, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that that's not a unique from the Debian, but. When, when that happens, it'd be nice if that, that will happen, no matter what sort of project you're in. 
it's important that you can make a point of mentioning this so people will realize that they're fundamentally back in the world. Because yeah, that's, that's, that's unfortunate that that does yeah. happen. But, I, uh, at first, I thought I was doing something horribly, horribly wrong mm -hmm. and just not complying with the policy or something. that's making me juggle between four teams. And I, why, why do I have to go here, ask here, and they told me to go back? It's like sure. a permanent loop. <coughs> Did you have something, James? Yeah, I just wanted to um, question something which was raised a minute ago, the fact that Debian is a better place to do this maintainership because they have more developers. But it seems like we have a pool of people who want to come and become maintainers of certain packages. So should we look at instead at changing the rules um, in Ubuntu to make it a suitable place for doing that when they wish to do so? So we can we have we're currently at 200 developers, we could be at a lot more if we start to um, enable those people to do what they want rather than, rather than trying to fit them into our current model. So perhaps move away for some things from the no maintainer model to one where we have maintainers, but if we want, like low threshold and not energy that's in it. In some ways we have, when we added the per package upload category to Ubuntu developers, so you can now get rights just over a specific set of packages. Um, it's not really encouraged as something that you would do for the long term, it's like it's more as an entry route. If you're interested in this set of packages and you get upload rights on this set of packages, and then over time, it's kind of expected you'll broaden out your your skill set to broaden out your involvement in the AMO too. Uh, so <laughs> should we should we change that? You come along, you get your package reviewed, and it gets put in, and you're made per package uploader, with no expectation that you go beyond that if you don't want to. Possibly. I think that definitely captures the experience of someone who just doesn't want to care about Debian, like doesn't use it, is an Ubuntu person, <coughs> wants to be an Ubuntu developer. Um, it's certainly better to have that package in our archive and put process on them that involves... Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good it point. might not be. I mean, let's be honest, if somebody's wanting to submit something to review, review, they're probably not familiar with Debian, and that's just another barrier. So anything we can do to lower that would be, would be helpful. But the thing is, just because we're making it easier for them to get the package in, that's, that's good. No, 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 I don't mean to end to review, but if you're going to suggest going to Debian, lowering that threshold as much as low as possible. Okay. I mean, without separate, sacrificing quality, of course. I've, I've found it's a natural path once you, <coughs> and I've seen other developers doing this, once you do that in Ubuntu, once you get your package into Ubuntu, to start realizing, oh, there's all these other distributions that I could get my package into with no additional work. Um, so I don't think we're actually harming the process of going upstream if we encourage people uh, well, to, to watch I'm packages. Being harmed. I'm just saying that I've worked through trying to get something in the review and, and I was woefully and aptly prepared for that alone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying if, if you're asking me to then, then take the additional steps of I've got to learn about Debian and the different tools they have now to get it in. It is a barrier. So one of our suggestions, um, which we haven't brought up yet, is maybe we should close review and add a tag set to mentors.debian.net, you know, like, a, uh, like a web form or something there, so that it's not a different interface, it's not a different process. Um, it's just, I know, De I know Ubuntu, I come into the channel, and then, oh, well, if I need to go back to Debian, it's just tweak the tags and I'm in Debian. Um, you know, I, I have to change my, my um, you know, control file a little bit, but it's a very, it's a more natural process to make that shift. Do we, do we just lose the case of open to specific packages that, for whatever reason, there's a difference between the dependencies on Debian, for instance? Uh, I, I'm sure we have packages in the archive. Uh, we certainly see people trying to submit them. Yeah. Um, now, but, uh, very rarely do I see a package in Ubuntu that could not work in Debian if it had slightly well, like if it didn't say depend on Launchpad lib or didn't have what like about the, I mean, sorry, um, not well, some indicators. App indicators. <laughs> um, usually, and there are some there are some very very rare cases when the app <coughs> do use Ubuntu functionality and be useless without that. And of course, we still should have methods to accept those packages, but. Yeah. Any other sort of package that does not specifically require Windows specific functionality, I think, should not be accepted into the universe. Well, I think it's unless we have a policy about that. I think there is room um, for some 
community-driven uh, packages that are um, that are that are um, almost entirely derived from Ubuntu-specific technologies. As long as uh, Unity, as long as um, indicators, as long as uh, you know, all of those things remain in Ubuntu specifically, I think that we're going to see people developing against those technologies in ways um, where the apps could irreparably suffer without access to those technologies. Sure. Uh, and what I was saying is things that don't require those technologies shouldn't be in the first sure. sector. Yeah. Um, would it be possible just to create some sort of policy like saying that we, unless you have Ubuntu specific requirements, you will not be accepting those, and you should go somewhere else. You should go to Debian. Or would that be too harsh of a policy to create? Because I think if we could do that out of the session, that'd be something very, <coughs> very good for archive quality. That we could. It's almost a de facto policy at the moment. A lot of us don't look at review, and when we do look at it, we try and encourage people to go to Debian if the package belongs in Debian. So if this is what we are doing, we should probably have a policy backing it, or we should not be doing it. Right. <coughs> One of the issues raised on the, um, in one of the Debian conversations about this was there are some Debian specific infrastructure pieces to mentors.debian.net right now where they expect um, <coughs> Debian packages and wouldn't necessarily be able to support the custom fields that we add to yeah. the Ubuntu packages. But this is, this is a technical problem. It's solvable with a little bit of implementation work. Um, but it, it does mean that it's not something that we could just like switch over tomorrow. <laughs> we could shut down review tomorrow. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but we might have... AJ Mitch, you wanted to go do it right now? Solve the problem? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any idea of how many people are doing reviews in the um, I haven't, I haven't done a scan, but can when I went through the up? current... I, I bet, I bet, uh, well, yeah, we can see when that's... talking about five people, people, See when the last comment people. was. My understanding is it's, it's almost no one. So I saw. I, I went through the current uh, issues and so I found was, some that had. Well, we just have last upload, but this one was last advocated uh, almost two months ago. I found quite a few Three that had been I touched guess. since January. So I guess the migration of the reviewers from the platform is not an issue. Yeah. I mean, here's one that hasn't been really touched since uh, 2009. Okay. Uh, Oh, this is, this uh, review doesn't get a lot of love because uh, I, like, like the, the people. <laughs> what? You should just reject that now. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I did actually start going through the queue and just saying, you know, it's been a year. If you're interested in this, like resubmit. And I mean, it's 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 a it's a self feeding cycle because um, I think that those reviews are nominally tasked to Motu, and Motu are largely uninterested in accepting those packages, and as a result, Motu largely doesn't go and do those reviews and. So they sort of sit there indefinitely. So do you have any idea of, well, assuming that we decide to merge in a single platform from, from <coughs> assuming that, do you have an idea of how we can, how can we encourage people on the Ubuntu side to do some reviews? So we're trying to do that in some way in the other side. <coughs> an idea how we can, so I, I know you have some program, for instance, for periodic patch reviews. Do you think? can set up something similar for reviews in whatever platform you choose? I think there's a good chance that we could. Um, uh, we're kind of starting that for the ARB side of like talking through, let's just have, like take a regular time slot that I take responsibility to spend my two hours or four hours or whatever um, going through that. Can you do the same process? Mojo has actually tradition. Uh, and I say traditionally rather loosely, but it's traditionally had a concept of that. There used to be a concept of review days. There used to be a concept of review days, like REVU days. Um, but as far as I know, that, that hasn't happened since I've been involved in the project. So two and a half, three years at least, probably longer. <coughs> Have you looked at the slash stats page on review? It's got a graph of activity and it just sort of dies off a couple of years ago. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Judging by that graph, I infer that we have a six month release cycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people do love coming into Hashibutu Motu a week before release, get wanting to get their app in. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, but actually, mm. speak, speaking as an upstream maintainer, it would be good if there was a lot more noise about two weeks before feature freeze. Mm. <laughs> That's not about this session, it's just, mm. yeah. So Daniel, do you think there's a chance, we do bug days, right? Do you think there's a chance that we could kind of start kicking off some new package review days um, and do that? I think we had them for a while. I don't know what would happen. Yeah, that's what we just said. I, don't, I think nobody was doing it on those days, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so they just kind of died. Because um, there wasn't any interest. Does it stem from a culture where people don't want to review new things because they feel um, drowned in all the old things? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think that, that's definitely an issue with most of exists right now. So should we be working to reverse that rather than trying to find, just trying to force these same people to... Yeah. I'm, quite, yeah. I'm quite keen to get rid of a bunch of packages that haven't seen any activity in ages. Um, I posted a link in the pad to a report on packages that haven't been uploaded in the last 18 months and are in Ubuntu only. Why? Sorry, are they not valid? Um, if well, we should go and have a look and see if they've got lots of open bugs. If there's a bug saying it doesn't work at all, clearly no one's looking after it. Probably shouldn't be there. Sure, sure. Doing. It's also possible that someone's finally managed to make working software. <laughs> and we should actually yeah. treasure that. <laughs> 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 in that case, I should take over maintenance of it. Stefan, I could we well, perhaps introduce a concept of orphan package in, in universe as well. So if we find a package like that, we could... Add, no one cares. add it to a list of packages of pending removal. Yeah. And, and if no one steps up in two weeks or a month or something, it gets dropped. That works. Yeah. Yeah, as it is I, think, I think we should make a distinction. Because what I've seen lately and the app review process sort of tends to, to, to this demographic of people is people who are upstream of the software and they are trying to get it is Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So talking about software that doesn't get updates anymore, people don't care about it, I think this is very different and uh, we should probably try to cut them some, some slack. Yeah, it seems, it seems to me that a lot, of these, a lot of these processes and policies are attempting to um, supplement our ranks with people who may not really <coughs> want to do that. Like trying to get trying to get the packages into Debian when that's not their immediate aim, um, rather than letting them into Ubuntu, emphasizing the benefits of being in Debian as well and allowing that to happen over time, or um, trying to get people to submit new packages and then move gradually to become a Motu, taking care of, of, of Ubuntu when they may just care about their one particular application <coughs> which they're asking for. Um, so it seems that uh, this, uh, this feeling drowned by, by, the, by the current state of things is leading us to um, uh, create policies which make it hard for anyone to, to, to come along and, and, and help out in some ways. Um, by, uh, yes, it would be great if, if Motu was 10 times bigger. We would, we would obviously be able to deal with, with, with all of the bugs at that point. Not all of the bugs, but we deal with, you know, have a much better um, coverage of all the packages. But, um, should we, you know, we've been trying for however many years now to swell the ranks of motive and it's not grown significantly in the last three, four, five years. Should we be saying that perhaps trying to get these people who are interested in one particular package to come and be a motive so we have ten times as many motives is maybe not the way to go about it. Um, there are other things we could do in terms of um, reducing the scope of uh, what motive is uh, has to feel responsible for all of that kind of feeling that everything's broken and we have to fix it all before the least otherwise other things just gonna be crap. So reducing the scope could, could lead to most um, being feeling uh, happy with the work they're doing. Um, I don't know how what scope would be would be preferable for most um, but um, if if the scope like trying to reduce the scope rather than increase the numbers maybe a better way to, to, to go given that <coughs> increasing the numbers hasn't had we haven't had much luck in that for the past however many years. Sure, and with my Motu hat on, having some conceptual way to separate myself from the responsibility of these packages um, would certainly make me more comfortable with sponsoring them mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know how you <coughs> separate that responsibility. I don't know how you sort of separate the responsibility from the. Uh, I, I, 
I, I do certainly feel responsible for anything that gets uploaded under my key. I think that will continue to be the case no matter what sort of maintainership changes we make. It's worth remembering that the reason Motu was founded this way was specifically to avoid blocking on a maintainer, uh, to avoid that culture of this package is broken, it needs to be updated, but I have to wait six months because I can't get in touch with the maintainer who has that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Which is no longer a problem in Debbie because we have very, very good enemy processes now. Yeah, yeah. But that's, ju just to keep in mind that there was a, there was a reason that it was made general and it's mm -hmm. not just, uh, if, if we start introducing changes, we should make sure we hold on to that, um, that original value as well. Well, <coughs> is, I mean, is, is that what leads to being responsible for everything? Yeah. Yeah. If it, it, was, it was an intentional choice to say all MOTUs are responsible for everything. Everybody has access to everything. Then it seems that, to me, that we can't, um, we can't necessarily keep that and reduce the scope of MOTU at the same time. Well, I mean, maybe we can just... If the intent is to make MOTU feel responsible for everything, then we can't stop MOTU feeling responsible for everything without changing that. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean, I agree, but it seems like the, the, obvious, um, the obvious answer here is to really strongly encourage upstreams to come in and, and have maintaining their own applications. Mm. I mean, what you said <coughs> because this way, like, if we have plenty of, you know, people who just care for a single package who may even be upstream or involved with upstream, then the amount of stuff that, like, Moto can still work on these packages, of course, because we don't have maintainers, but the amount of packages Moto would have to care about would hopefully decrease because we would have all these new people who would, you know, take care of, and, and take care in a very good way because they are involved this upstream as well. Um, and maybe maybe we just communicate this statement not strong enough that we really want these people. And having automated tools or having tools in general um, to make packaging a lot easier for, for you know, leaf applications, simple applications, or even complex applications that have the same build system. Um, that sounds like a really good way forward. It's, it's quite a common requirement for us when accepting a new package or a late FFE or something to require the, if it's up, the upstream wanting to maintain it in Ubuntu, requiring them to subscribe to the package so that they will take care of it to some degree. Say again, requiring them to, to subscribe to the package if it's a new upload or right. something dangerous. So I guess, uh, so kind of in line with that, um, a thing that would help with that is just having a very short page about explaining to an upstream from their point of view what maintaining yeah. the package in Ubuntu or Debian actually means. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I mean for, for me, as, for me as an upstream, I, I release, I build Tidepool, <laughs> like an MSI, a DMG file, and I want it in Ubuntu, basically. Like that's that's kind of what I want. Mm -hmm. And so I don't I don't think about having to maintain my MSI file or my, my DMG file, like I release it, it's done. But suddenly when it's in and went to Debian and then parked it like a maintainership button for that. So it would be good to be clear about that. <coughs> um, but I don't know what that means. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a training thing. And really, maintaining well, your package is not a whole lot more work than making your tarball and putting it up on your website. <coughs> it's just a few extra fields and <coughs> you're there. Like a few extra files, you're there. But um, where do you go for help if you're not sure about what you're doing for the handle of the schemes? If you're that stream, you can use a... Hash of Ubuntu, Ubuntu packaging. Pound Ubuntu developer. So do you do that or do you do the Debian? You can do any of them because there'll be, there'll be, there'll be plenty of people yeah. who will help you in Ubuntu Mutu. There'll be people who will help you in Ubuntu Debian Debian Devel. Hash Debian Dash Mentors? Uh, yeah. There's also Debian Mentors. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in uh, RFC. RFC, yes. And if you're doing something more specific, there's um, Pound Debian Python. There's Pound Debian Ruby. Same thing in Ubuntu. So you can get help from any of those channels. <coughs> Generally, um, Ubuntu Motu uh, is is happy to provide help for anything that is in the archive or uh, actively trying to get into the archive um, for things going through extras or PPAs. Uh, Ubuntu packaging tends to be a little bit more appropriate, though you can generally get help from Ubuntu Motu uh, in those cases as well. So um, we're not feeling grumpy. If if we're in a case where um, an upstream author of, of, a, of a software project comes along and, and puts it in a button and uh, they're, they're 
maintaining it and like updating new versions and things like that. And, and we're we're three weeks before release. Um, what sort of things would make you guys as Motu um, feel that you had to you had to make a change to that package that you that you weren't able to leave that to maintain it? You couldn't trust them to to take care of it. It's, it's um more connected to the idea that precedent has not generally seemed to support that style of maintainership, right. which just sort of leads to a general need when somebody comes along and says they're going to maintain something. Uh, it's, it is a trust thing. Right. So um, if, the, if, if that was changed <coughs> somehow, I don't know how, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the maintainer of that package was clear. <coughs> would there still be things which you felt compelled to actually do something about that you couldn't just ignore that package and, and leave it up to the maintainer? Like, like distribution-wide things, I guess. Or, or would you still feel responsible if there was a bug in the package to <coughs> fix that bug? We had a package uploaded quite late in the cycle, last cycle, and we were talking about it last night because it was rather poor quality, and everyone really felt responsible for Poor quality of the package. Poor, poor quality <laughs> in, in what sense? Upstream code. Um, it was just code horrible. Buggy and, yeah. Probably. <laughs> Certainly. You use system every other line. <laughs> for example. So why why did that why did why did people feel responsible for, for that code being buggy? Because we are responsible for that. It's uh, it's in the universe. It's not in Debian. It is their form of responsibility. Was it like buggy in the sense that it just didn't work very well, or was it like security issues? Or I, I, I'm still looking for the security issues, but I'm pretty sure it's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because in a lot of ways, like if it's just bad quality, then it should, you know, people people will you know write bad reviews and nobody will use it because obviously it's bad quality, right? Is it between but bad quality? Is a different matter. Sorry. Is it, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. There's a difference between bad quality as far as the package doesn't work, or there's a difference between bad quality and this is an unmaintainable pile of crap. Um, <laughs> and in, I think, the case of that package, it's the latter rather than the former. So, so, so not something necessarily users would notice, except for the fact that it randomly breaks things. Um, we feel bad for exposing our users to it. Yeah, we, 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 it, it makes me feel <laughs> bad on the inside, and that when I think of this package is used by actual people. Yeah. So if, if, if we... I don't know if I'm serious with the present this, but if we add another component, so we have main, we have universe, we have upstream maintained, and Motu's, you know, Motu's agreement is universe, would you still feel the need to wander over to, to upstream maintained at times? I guess there are things like, like language transitions, where that may be, you're trying to remove it, it some like if, um if Motu felt a little bit more empowered about cleaning up orphan packages, we might be more comfortable with pulling them in initially with the knowledge that if it didn't go well, that, that we could, you know, take that decision back. What, what barriers are currently there to pull up? I think mostly psychological. Okay. Right. But, I think, but I I'm think very much in favor of getting rid of stuff that's not good. Right? I think ratings and reviews might help us there because it's actually a signal from the users. Um, so we have we have popcorn, but it's not really useful um, for for actually deciding whether the package is any good. Um, we have bug reports, but it's not all, all that good. But um, ratings and reviews can be very useful. Like if, if everyone in the last six months has given us one star saying it doesn't work, then have, do then we have a systematic method of looking at very low review packages? Not right. Well, we could write some scripts, <coughs> that's easy, but I mean, in a lot of ways, we should maybe have, I, I mean, it's kind of difficult exposing like a wall of shame, um, <laughs> but, but at least having some internal um, URL where we can look at like the, the worst rated packages <coughs> and, and actually do something about it, like, you know, either contacting upstream or just, you know, getting rid of the stuff. Well, and then the stuff that hasn't been rated <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, so that's, that's a good point. We should provide some tools or API to easily get this data. Yeah. So we have 10 minutes left in the session. I think we should probably, at this point, switch over 
from ideas to focusing on what we're going to do specifically in the next six months. Um, so one thing that I pulled from this session is I would like to make a proposal on Ubuntu Devel to say, let's just close review. We are not, we're not monitoring it, and it's actually a disservice to people who want to get onto Ubuntu to have it there, um, because it's a, it's a target. Um, so just close it now and change the documentation to say, um, basically, come to Ubuntu Motu and Ubuntu Packaging if you have questions. <coughs> and if you want a submission web interface, then we go to Debian. Um, and <coughs> that we, the way we deal with, just for now, the informal way that we start dealing with making sure that we provide staffing for the extra workload is to say, if I personally point someone upstream to Debian mentors, then I will also personally not just let that package drop off. I will personally watch it. Um, and if I can't personally watch it, I will make sure they find someone from Ubuntu who can help them. Um, it's, it's a first step. Um, I'm not actually sure how many packages we're going to get this way since we don't get necessarily that many new packages, package submissions anyway. Um, so I, I'd say, I'd say propose closing review, full stop, without any, just shut it down because we're, it is a disservice, as you said, and it's just giving us a bad name. We're pointing people there, telling them we're going to do something, and then not doing it. Close it down. Discuss the other things, but close it down. Like don't don't have to have an answer about who's going to review things in Debian and what. But then just close it down. Yeah. 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 We, it's, there's no point having it at a minute because it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I agree. It's just misleading. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, uh, other questions uh, about um, Debian mentors? Uh, is there a way to see how things start piling up and, and how well mentors are tending to mentoring, uh, uh, sponsoring requests? So yes, there is. I think I've already pointed on this a couple of times to the that are done at that point this year, and they have all the sort of numbers, statistics, and everything you want. Okay. But it's not those graphs or whatever they are. I don't know. know. I don't know. They're okay, they're not online now. Yeah, they'll, I think they might have been online. There will be URLs in the talk, maybe. Mm. I can't remember. Ask, ask Ashish. Yes. Yes. Okay, so can, um, would you be okay with me giving you an action yeah. to come up with a specific proposal for the mentor's behavioral modifications that would be needed to review Ubuntu packages as yeah. well? I think that's something we're going to need to develop on mm -hmm. Ubuntu Devel, so it needs, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a process, so yes, yeah. I'm um, happy to do that. Should we kick off discussion about what exactly is in scope for getting into Ubuntu as a new package, or do we have that? Because I, I know we have informal, we have informal criteria. Like I was told, not from my pack, when I was trying to get my first package in, for code debit instead. But um, should we develop some formal criteria for what is and is not appropriate so we can have a uniform application of it for class number two? It's not ideal. It's not a big help to work there, because there's always something that's not on the table. People have to upgrade the like, package what the requirements are. I mean, it's all spelled out in various different pages, but definitely from the Ubuntu side, it may not be clear in various things, they, whether or not that's happened to even a photo in the first place or not. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I don't know whether Debian has any grounds over whether, or whether the package is likely to be used enough or not, or whether they just let anyone who has a working package to put it in or not. It's, if, up, it's up to you to make the decision for yourself as an uploader. Would, so if an upstream comes to you with some code they've just written, there aren't questions about whether anyone's using it. <coughs> there, are, there, are, there are packages in Debian that have been in there that have no users. And that's fine if they have a maintainer. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, it, that's part of what makes Debian great, because there are these random things in there that are maybe useful that nobody else has ever required before. Or so, the before. so yeah, uh -huh. use, utility... Yes, that's correct. Yes. Could, are you happy to take on that, that work item? Of, um, yeah, it's excellent. <laughs> Could we also perhaps further really explore the concept of orphaning packages and removing bad packages from the universe? Mind if I make that action item for you? Yeah. <laughs>
It's Jonathan, my lunch bed name, actually. Have you seen the kid at me as well? I'm not by myself. Or maybe I can let them know. Like the docs, like the upstream point of view title docs for main management. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, do, you, do you want that one? Or? Yeah, I do want that okay. one. Actually. I think that's something that should go on developer data bank. I mean, I, it can have no, more I, details I on wiki and etc. But it needs I, to be great. I think it's something where we should aim to reduce the true content of that to zero. <laughs> actually, <laughs> and thus we don't need to have it on developer.com. But maybe in the meantime, we're living in this entire world. I quite like a document that makes the case for uploading, okay. for putting a package in Debian, the, the, the compelling case. The so open. does that mean that you're volunteering to write such I think there's also already a Debian for Ubuntu developers page. I can't remember what that says. So you're yeah. volunteering to update it? But yeah, well, I, I, want, I, want, okay, I want it to exist. I think it might already exist. It exists. If, it, if it's not very good, I want to make it better. And furthermore, I want it to be able to be found by people as well. So it's, it's basically review what's there, see if it needs to be fixed, see how we make it more visible. Yeah, and okay. We also need, I guess, maybe in sc maybe we also need how how Debian as well. I guess, like. At least point us to the sort of the world of documentation. I don't know. Yeah, so far, do you know, is, is there some kind of page on Debian.org about it? We are nominally five I, minutes not, over for the Sorry, the I'll just understand the minutes last point. I'm an upstream developer. Um, uh, well, like, what, from a process point of view, what, how do I, how do I get my no, package? I don't think you're anything like that. Yeah, that would be something, I, I guess, under the mentors. Is, is there something like how do I maintain it myself? And no, it's not about that. It's just uh, how to be nice to your downstream. Yeah. Yeah. Do you maintain as good? Maybe. It'd be nice to have something shorter to start with. Yeah. Like that's good for details, but something. Right. Okay. This sounds like a good six I mean, months I of think, work. I think, <laughs> I think closing review on its own will be a huge improvement over the current state of affairs. I, I, I think, so I feel better about doing that because what it seems like right now is like we're kind of lagging on, it's sort of like dragging on, like as long as it's there, we're kind of like leaning on it even though it's broken. Yeah. Right. And if so we can just cut it off and then build up the new process, we'll be doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. So,